If you're looking for a good primary care practice, look no further than right here in Hartford County to Medical Health Group, located at 1415 South Mountain Road in Suite 100, right behind the Wawa in Joppa, Maryland. They are doctors you can trust. Call them at 410-918-0777 or visit them at M. HG, that's Medical Health Group, mhgdoctors.com. You know, in the past, we talked about doing a podcast strictly on the history of Harford County. Uh, this particular podcast, it's not about the history of Harford County, but it is historical because we are talking about a historical event, sort of. Uh, a little over 105 years ago, I think 106 years ago this month, was the sinking of the Titanic, the ship that was billed as the unsinkable ship. And I have two guests on this podcast from the Scottfield Theater Company, uh, Becky and Chuck, and they are putting on a production of Titanic the Musical. It uh, starts this weekend, actually tonight, April 6th, and it's very interesting because, well, just listen to the podcast and hopefully you'll be able to get tickets to go out there and enjoy it. You are listening to the Harford County Living Podcast with Rich Bennett. Thank you for coming and please send any suggestions or comments to podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. The Harford County Living Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes can be found at harfordcountyliving.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorites, RRS feed, or iTunes. All links are in the show notes. Now let's join Rich Bennett and his special guest. like to welcome everybody to the Harford County Living Podcast. We have uh, with us today Becky and Chuck from the Scott Field Theater Company. They have a big production coming up at the Opera House in Heavy mm-hmm. Grace, right? Yep. Um, Titanic, so hopefully they'll sell out if they haven't sold out yet. Um, but actually, I, ju- I just had you guys feature as Nonprofit of the Week mm-hmm. as well, right? So you're yep. 501c3. We are. Yep. How did you come about uh, starting Scott Field? And how long has it been around? <sighs> um, this is our second production. So we've okay. only been in existence since last June. Um, we started in, in June and had our auditions for Tuck Everlasting. Tuck Everlasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was really cool because that was a national community theater premiere for oh. that show. Um, okay. And uh, I actually went to college with Chris Miller, the composer. So we got, um, through him, we were able to get the rights before any other community theater in the nation. So that was pretty cool. And um, and that was in October, and then this is this is now our second show. Titan. Now, how'd you guys do it? Talk about lasting. We sold out every show. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, we did. That is. It awesome. was pretty awesome. And, was and pretty the, cool. I was gonna say because the opera house is pretty new too, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We were what the second we full were, musical. We we were fortunate yeah. to be in that space. We were only the second musical to be in there, and um, the first one to use their mics. Their mics were brand. New. Yeah, it was all <laughs> brand new system, new lighting. Beautiful seating. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, one of the big uh, uh, issues previously with the Opera House was that it didn't have uh, uh, an, ele- an elevator for handicap accessible. Now right. it does, and it's it's really a, a for a small intimate space, two hundred and three seats, I believe. Mm-hmm. It is oh, a wow, very is mm-hmm. very nice theater. It really, yeah, and we and nice. honestly, uh, you know, Tuck Everlasting was a great production for that space. Right. Um, the lighting was exceptional. The uh, <coughs> the cast did a really good job, but uh, overall experience was fantastic, both from the performer side as well as the opera house, and, and even our audience just really reached out to us on our on our Facebook and things right. of that nature to tell us how much they enjoyed the production. And everything you do, all your shows are there, mm-hmm. are done there? So far, yeah. Yeah, we, we have uh, hopes at some point in time to... Uh, look for other venues, maybe in the Bel Air space, but uh, right now that that's not happening in terms right. of availability. And they haven't built the uh, the Arts Council hasn't right. had an opportunity to move forward on that project. But you know, one day we're looking to potentially look at that space as well. I'll tell you what, all that property there, I have a funny feeling it's going to be a huge place. Well, they have big plans. Hopefully, they have big plans. Hopefully, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> hopefully, hopefully that'll get started soon. That'd be really nice to have. They, and you said two hundred and three people. Mm-hmm. Two hundred and three seats. Yep. Yep. See, I think I would like that better than something really huge. Because well, to me, that was the your... thing. We were originally going to be at either Bel Air High School or, big, yeah. uh, which is like, what is it, 800 seats or 800. something? Yeah, and then, plus, Or yeah. the Amos Center, which is like 900 seats. Um, and that, when when you pay for the rights to do a musical, it actually, it's based on how many nights and performances you're doing. Also based on the amount of seats. So your rights actually go up based on that. So we were actually able to as a new company to kind of keep our costs low by also using um, a space like the Opera House. But I think kind of when we even came in there, it's more intimate. And for Tuck, it was a really good space for Tuck. Right. I feel like a lot of the intimacy might have been lost in such a big space like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But it also really, the way that they renovated that space, it feels like coming home. It was kind of yeah. crazy. When we came in for Titanic, I was like, and we're home now. Because it's so homey. they something going on there. They do. It is. They have they a very do. busy schedule cool. there. Mm-hmm. I like the fact, as a matter of fact, as I was, I, I tried to share their calendar of events, you know, on Harford County Living. And one of the things I was shocked that they even showed the old movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Black and White, Black and White Tuesdays. Lots of Tuesdays. Yeah. In fact, they, uh, they're getting ready to show uh, the movie Tuck Everlasting. In Are they really? I know. I'm, I'm speaking. Oh, okay. Well, that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, they're having me come speak about the difference between the movie and the, and the show, and Sophia is performing oh, Everlasting. Sophia. Are you little... up and heckle? <laughs> um, nicely, yes. Um, but our lead little girl who played um, Winnie Foster, she's going to come and sing. Sophia too, so Borden, fantastic. Cool. Mm-hmm. Now, where do you find the people for the production? Um, we have open auditions. Um, it's all volunteer based, right? Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, reaching out into the local community and get... <laughs> is that bad? Sorry, I got cool. <laughs> um, and so we invite. You know, invite people. Um, we're pretty active on social media. Um, we have, um, we do have our uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram website, and all of those uh, venues are used to promote our auditions. Right. Um, and you know, Harford County is a is a very talented, uh, <laughs> talent rich space in terms of theater and performers. Uh, some of the high schools here are exceptional. Um, and, yeah. you know, uh, Becky works in the community of dance, so she has a lot of uh, exposure to different types right. of performers. And um, yeah. we've been very fortunate to, uh, to get the word out there. Um, you know, we're a new company, so uh, the opportunities with us are, are pretty wide open. And, um, you know, with Tuck, we had a, an exceptional cast that really um, just, just knocked it out of the water, for lack of a better word. And uh, for Titanic, uh, I feel like we've done the same thing. Uh, we had, it's a very uh, male heavy cast, and we had an exceptional turnout for the guys. And uh, anybody mm-hmm. that wants to come to the show, I think, is going to be very uh, pleasantly surprised to see some fantastic talent. We actually have a lot of professional singers in this area that either perform oh, professionally yeah. bef- before or currently do things here and there. And we got really lucky with. Both of our casts that we have, I mean, vocally, the talent is insane. I mean, like when they're, the entire cast is on stage singing some of these numbers, the opening number and the closing number, it's just, I mean, it's so powerful. It's amazing. Are you allowed to drop any names? What? Of oh, singers? Who's in it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so <clears throat> some of our leads are Liz Marion and Brian Ruff um, play opposite each other. As Rob Alice Tucker, and Edgar. who was uh, a teacher Rob here Tucker, at Edgewood. He's a, yeah, he's the head okay. of drama at Edgewood. He's an um, exceptional, fantastic performer. Yep. Uh, Matt Tart is playing uh, Mr. Ismay. Uh, Donovan Murray is a fantastic yeah. voice and just a great actor uh, as part of the cast so as well. All these names are sad and familiar. Um, <laughs> um, some of them, some of the people were in Tuck, but not mm-hmm. everybody. We do have some new faces. So. Uh, and some of the some of the young cast members that we have: Isabella Bordner is playing uh, Kate McGowan and uh, Charlie Johnson. Uh, Matt Truly. Uh, Matt Truly is a local high sh- high school student. Just did in the Heights here at uh, Edgewood High School. He's actually Rob Tucker's student, so yeah. the student oh, really? and teacher are getting to yeah. work together. Which oh, is that's really, cool. That's a neat thing to see. Yeah. And so. Matt has just got a fantastic voice and, and a big future. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, honestly, um, we've been very very lucky to have some really fantastic talent come out and uh, want to be a part of it. And you know, somebody else I want to mention in in Tuck uh, was very fortunate to work with a young man <laughs> named uh, Jesse Hutchins. Uh, Hutchinson, mm-hmm. yeah, and fantastic kid, uh, new to theater. Uh, he had not done a theater show until Tuck, uh, other than some local stuff at the school and right. classes and stuff. And uh, 
I think he was in Tom Sawyer there, but uh, it's kind of beautiful. Just voice. a fantastic voice, and just yeah. I mean, his spirit is great. Uh, if he, you know, if he wants to pursue theater in the long run, he would be an exceptional That's person great. for that. But yeah, I get to work with him again, which is really really fun. <laughs> I'm in the show myself, and uh, looking forward to it. Uh, uh, play Wallace Hartley, which is the uh, band leader. That was on the Titanic. Well, I have a funny feeling I had to do something with music that you're yeah, playing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little, a little mm-hmm. interesting side note, just because you know, whenever you get a character, you want to do a little research, kind of yeah. figure out a little something about the character. Um, <clears throat> Wallace Hartley actually shares the same birthday as me, June second, which is an oddity, I a, a rarity. You told me about but that. It, That's it cool. just really, it kind of like gave me a chill. You know, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm I'm one of the characters that doesn't survive the uh, the the sinking, but uh, you know just to know that I had some sort of a connection with this person before you know 106 right. years ago, you know, still it's it's kind of neat to to be able to say that, and uh, you know we all do our little research and figure out you know how we're going to play our characters, and that was one of the things that kind of just hit a nerve for me. So now one thing I got to ask because you know a lot of times the people behind the scenes don't get enough credit i mean how big is the production staff that actually the set decorators and all that Ooh, um it's a a large have yeah we have a director choreographer i'm the choreographer for the show um our director alan herlinger and then we have actually two music directors which has been really neat we did the same thing for tuck um we have a vocal director and then we have someone who is actually conducting the orchestra so they're two separate people so um they kind of split the job up a little bit which is neat um and then, I mean, if I you mean, look at costumes, costumes we, have, we have like three or four people yeah, working we have on those. Several people, Heidi's wow. doing our um, props. We have, yeah, we have a props person. <clears throat> um, oh my gosh, I'm trying sound. to think of it, it, it takes so, so well, many. Sound is, yeah. yeah, sound is actually a, a guy named Moises who works at the Opera House and he's just he's exceptional. Yeah, he's wonderful. Bill Price is doing our lighting and he did our lighting oh. for Tuck Everlasting and. He's done a lot of a lot of big theater shows and and he's really good. He's got say, a, did he do quite a for a lot of bands and all too. I'm sure he I'm has. I'm sure. Yeah. Honestly, he's, I don't have his. He's uh, done stuff in the area since I was yeah performing mm-hmm. here when I was a kid before yep. high school and stuff. So it takes. That was it was only ten years ago. Yeah. It, it's okay. <laughs> it, it certainly takes a village to put on a production. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that happen. Um, our stage manager, manager Lithia, uh, not she's a been fantastic she does you know she put our playbill together she keeps the cast in order you know those types of individuals are um it's really important that you get the right people in the right positions Mm -hmm. um you know some of the individuals on a production team do get a small salary but they put it for what they put in hours wise it's yeah it's insane Uh, right you know uh you know you're really almost insulting them with what you're offering to pay them (laughs) but you know maybe it, it it does offset some of their expenses but Ultimately, it, it takes a lot of people to put these productions together. Um, Leaning on a lot of people. Yeah. Turning to a lot of people for, for help with things. Yeah, like and, you know, we, nice. we've reached out to the local community theater for different props and set pieces. And, uh, you know, uh, Chuck Bowden <laughs> from Butler High School is part of our board, and he was able to help us with, you know, some props and right. things of that nature. And, you know, it, the community theater is a is a... It's a big family here it's, in Hartford. I County. was going to say, because it's yeah. not just in the schools. You see a lot of churches mm-hmm. that are doing it yeah, as well. that's true. Yeah. That is true. I know you had, I um, uh, forget the church, a, a gentleman by the name of Tim Baldwin uh, was doing theater around this area before, around Joppa and all. But I don't know if he's still doing it anymore. I'm not sure. I, I attend mm-hmm. Calvary Baptist, and I have uh, kids there that we do youth drama with. Mm-hmm. And, that's what uh, he was doing, yeah. A lot of fun, and, uh, you know, We've had a couple of those kids go on to to do theater in college and and then in the high schools as well, which has been quite nice. And I've tried to get those kids to audition for our shows, but right now it's a conflict in terms of dates for their school productions right. and things of that nature. So you know there'll be a time when that comes. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah, we found that April's a pretty busy month for theater. Yeah, April, April and busy. March, like that's I think April, April and March are busy mm-hmm. months for everything. everybody. <laughs> everybody wants to get outside. The weather changes. Yeah. It's nice. Well, it's um, supposed to change. Yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah seriously. Spring, quote unquote. But it's been kind of cool because a lot of things have come full circle for me. Also, because I I grew up doing theater and mm-hmm. I started when I was six, 
and um, did my first show, Annie, at Long Green Valley Playhouse, which no longer exists anymore. <laughs> um, and I was actually in the show with Pam Provins, who is now in our show, Titanic. But oh, she was wow. also in Tuck. And so I had, I think I actually like connected with her on social media after she did Fiddler at HCC. Um, with Phoenix Festival Theater, and I think we connected or saw each other, and we were like, oh, my gosh, you know, that's you know, so cool to see you, whatever. And we got in connection, like, on Facebook, and then she heard about the Tuck Everlasting auditions and came out and auditioned and ended up, ended up getting the role of Nana. So after 30 <laughs> years, <laughs> we got to work together again, which is really, and it's really been cool. I'm sorry, after how many? 34. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. A, lot A lot of years. I won't say. I won't say. Four years with about 30 years of experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, That's she... been really neat. And actually, it was funny because her, our director for that show, mm -hmm. for Annie, ended up, I don't remember why, but for some reason he had to play Rooster. He had to play the character of Rooster and step in. I don't know if the guy <clears> dropped <throat> out or what happened, but he came and saw Tuck which was totally crazy because I hadn't seen him in a very long time, obviously, either. So that was really neat to see him. And he's coming to, to oh, good. Titanic. Good, good, good. And how many shows are you guys doing for Titanic? Six. Six. So we have the 6th, 7th, and 8th, the okay. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and those are at 8 p.m. And then the Sunday show is at 2 p.m on the 8th, and then we have the 13th, 14th, and 15th. And the same thing, Friday and Saturday nights are at 8, Sunday's at 2. And those, and I gotta get up there and see this. And just as a little it's bit a, of a commercial, if yeah. if anybody is interested in tickets, they can do they can go to our Scottfield website. Uh, they can also um, go to the Haverty Grace Opera uh, House website, um, which is hddopera.org oh, oh. and ohdg.org. Yeah, they have two different websites. So either of those, and you just go to the events right. and, and click on Titanic. Um, they can get you know. to through. They can get to them through Facebook too. To, for the event, yeah, the event has the, the yep, link yeah, on that's it. true, that so. is true, and it's it's yep. going to be a, uh, you know, everybody knows the story of Titanic. Uh, this yeah. is Titanic the musical. Um, a lot of people think that they might be coming to see a reproduction of the movie. That is not the case. This right. show uh, really highlights the, um, a couple of uh, things. It, it really shows you the real characters. I mean, everybody that's in the show, every character that's in the show, was an actual person on the ship. Uh, so you get a little bit of a, a, a snapshot into what type of person they were. It also plays against uh, the, you know, how the first class and the third class, while they were, you know, greatly different in terms right. of, you know, their wealth and things of that nature, um, you know, in the end, they kind of all are the same. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you start to see a little bit how they interact and, and uh, react to the circumstances. And uh, the music for the show is exceptional. Um, you know, I've been a big fan of the show. Uh, was fortunate enough to see it five years ago, uh, produced at Bel Air High School. Uh, they did an exceptional job. Um, recently, about a year ago, uh, actually, uh, Becky uh, and uh, myself at different times went down to Signature Theater down in uh, the D.C. area, oh, yeah. and they did a production of it. And um, that was kind of, that kind of started the snowball rolling for us to want to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's really a captivating show in that there's there is some intense moments, there's some lighthearted moments, there's right. just fantastic music um, and fantastic dancing. I'll absolutely, so the choreographer <laughs> should say that. Um, but yeah, honestly, there is a really uh, there's a reason for everyone and anyone to see it. Uh, you know, there are a lot of you know. Some people have asked me, "Is this a kid friendly show?" And I say to them that, you know, there are some adult things going on in that, you know, yes, the ship sinks and people don't survive. Uh, right. However, um, there's a lot of history to be learned there. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that, you know, this this story, ti Titanic, has perpetuated for years and years, yeah. you know, largely based on the movie. But ultimately, you know, it's a, it's a big message that we probably need to continue to spread because... Unfortunately, it was tragic, and, yeah. and there was some things that shouldn't have happened. And and you know, sharing just the story so helps. So fast that I think that people still are fascinated by the story mm -hmm. and about everything that went, you know, that happened to them. All the stuff that happened back then, it, it's amazing how people tend to forget. But then when you have stuff like this, and you're right, it, it, I think it's great for the kids to go to mm -hmm. to learn it. And because you, let's face it, especially the young girls when they were watching the movie. They didn't pay attention to the history. They were looking at Leonardo. 
you know. So, <laughs> this is a good point. It's, it's, a good it's point. true because I asked yeah. my daughter about. I said, "So, what'd you learn about the top? Oh God, he's hot." <laughs> Who? Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, what'd you learn about the movie? <laughs> well, our lead it, Rob it, Tucker's a pretty good-looking guy too. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about your tickets? Oh, God. Um, for um, children under twelve and for senior citizens, they're fifteen, and then That's for it? Mm-hmm. yeah, wow. and full price adult is eighteen. Yeah, it's a it's a reasonable price. We uh, yeah. we've made a conscious decision to not overprice and, and outprice ourselves from a lot of people right. that might want to see the show. Yeah. Uh, you know, we feel it's more important to, to to put on a production in front of a full house. Um, you know, we want people to come out and enjoy it. Uh, we want them to have an opportunity to see, you know, what we can do and, and have them just be just in the experience. Right. And ultimately, uh, the price point that we set as a board, um, Scott Field, you know, really considered upping our price. Um, you know, we did sell out everything for Tuck, uh, which was wonderful. Uh, we're not taking that for granted. And we want yeah. we want to make sure that we're, you know, fairly priced for our community um, you know, we want people from all over Hartford County to come to the show. You know, we mm-hmm. are producing the show in Haverty Grace because of the wonderful venue that it is. Um, but, uh, you know, we really extend the invitation. And we understand that somebody lives in the Joppa Town area or maybe Baltimore County or, you know, up in Cecil mm-hmm. County. They, they may, you know, they may look at that and say, well, you know, it's a little bit of a hike. Plus, i got to spend this amount. You know, so we try and do the best we can and keep it a fair price. But the other thing is, too, with, with it being in Happy to Grace and on the weekend, people schedule it right. Just go down there and spend the day down there. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, that's been the big thing for Happy to Grace, for the you know arts communities, that right. they've been trying to. Like, like a lot of local theaters have their show start time at 7, mm-hmm. um, but the Opera House wants to start all shows at 8, giving people time to come, park, enjoy some of the restaurants, walk around, um, and just support you know local restaurants and and bars and things like yeah, that it's a neat, area. It's a neat space. Everybody knows that Harvey Grace is a pretty mm-hmm. neat space. It's right oh, across yeah. from the, like, that that um, library right across the street is beautiful, too. It have is you gorgeous. Been in there? I have been, yeah. yep. I went there for a book sign. It's new. <laughs> it's new. Yeah, it's <laughs> literally right across the street. Oh, the new library. Okay, never mind. Yeah, the new Happy Grace library. Um, well, I mean, it's not new. I mean, it's like, what, a couple well, they years got, now? Well, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's new. I mean, it's a beautiful building. And then they just mm-hmm. renovated, you know, renovated the Opera House right across the street from it. So that whole area is being kind of like revitalized, yeah, which is which cool. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... I, mean, I got to ask you this, Uh-oh. okay, because when I had you guys as a nonprofit of the week, I didn't see a donate button on the website. We're in the process of working on it. But people can make donations to they you, can. right? Yes, okay. so we actually have the information on the website. Um, <laughs> We've had this discussion. We are, yeah, we're working on that. Um, yeah, we're working on that. Yeah, we, we are... Uh, for Tuck, we did it a little differently because yeah. we were trying to raise money to help us um, with our expenses for the orchestra, for paying the right. orchestra. Um, so we did a GoFundMe for that. Okay. Um, so that might be the only thing you might see on there, which it's still active. Yeah, it was. It's a still active campaign, so if anybody wants to donate they could donate through that um but you know we don't have uh, well no we are we are we are <laughs> we're in the process yeah that's that's actually uh, uh our grants gal is kind of helping us with some stuff okay. when we when we looked into that process we were also just beginning the titanic production and it's just unfortunately that we have not got that up Time. and running right. quite quickly yeah. enough but we will it'll be ready yeah. Yeah. um you know anybody comes to the show we'll get information in our playbill that that says if they're interested that they can help support scott field um and also though you know they can get on a uh, an email list that anybody wants to send us their email they can do that to our website uh Good. send us their contact <clears throat> through facebook yeah. and we'll put that information into our system and whenever we have auditions or productions or um you know we sometimes will maybe in the future do events where we have different people that perform with Scott Field, maybe out in the community singing in different areas. Um, you know, Fundraisers you know, stuff, yeah. I, uh, Becky did some work at the band shell in Bel Air with a bunch of people that sing. And, you know, that was two years ago, I think, but mm-hmm. nevertheless, something like that comes along and maybe some of our performers are in that. We can share that information. Well, that with should them be as well. this summer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah That'd be I, pretty I awesome that, though. I mean, I think about if somebody's summer. doing an event and then all of a sudden you just have cast members dressed up, you know, yeah. from Titanic, uh-huh. just come down and start singing, and people be like, Ooh. "This is pretty cool." Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that we free marketing we made a decision <laughs> for this show because of the uh, period costumes that we we actually um, contracted with a company to rent the 
predominantly all of the costumes, but we right. do have some that we've we've made and some that we've borrowed. Uh, but it is neat to see on stage some of the <laughs> the grand, beautiful dresses and the, the gentlemen, hats, the yeah, big, the, I mean, hats. Oh, yeah. the big hats, and, and yeah. the, you know the guys in the tuxedos, and uh, you know the. Uh, I have, I'm fortunate enough to have a young man named uh, Tate who plays my son in the show, and he's got the little knickers with the he's hat. He's so you know. adorable. Good-looking kid. So uh, you know, unfortunately, he doesn't look like his stage dad. But uh, <laughs> but ultimately, you know, we, we have uh, made a point to try and make this as authentic as possible. Good. Uh, Bob Denton is our set guy, and he's really created some really neat effects with the set. Um, our lighting guy, I've mentioned Bill already. You know, we've got some really neat lighting going Water. on. Water. Yeah, a lot of water, water stuff water in this. Effects. Pretty cool. I was going to ask you, man. Pretty cool. cool. No real water, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like it. We can't, it we can't damage the pretty new one. It does, <laughs> yes. It does look pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, thank God for computers and everything else nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to do something. Well, else. and the thing is, too, is like we have to kind of do our own version of this because right. I actually was fortunate enough to see it on Broadway. It won the 1997 Tony Award on Broadway, and um, I actually got to see it. And um, it it was so grandiose that there were some times where there was big emotional things happening that right. you weren't really watching the actor so much because you were watching, like, the ship tilt and people flying and furniture flying. And um, so then, like he said, when we went down to see it last year at Signature Theater, that was actually in the round. So they couldn't have the ship tilting and doing some of those things. So you were more watching the actors and seeing what they really went through. And, you know, and, it and was... just for anybody that doesn't understand that, in the round means that the audience sits all the way all around the, the stage. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's no, like, you have no back wall or proscenium or lighting effect, you know, on the back wall. So for us, kind of we're trying to do, like, almost like a combination of yep. the two mm -hmm. with, with more effects. And you have people um, flying? No, 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 no. Not no, no. be flying off the ship. <laughs> no, 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 no. And that's the thing is that we're in a in a small space, and it is right. a, a limited height space. Um, as well as we rent the space, so we can't come in and and drill into the floor and and do things that you know some other theaters might allow. So, um, so it's been it's been challenging, but um, lighting effects are are pretty cool. Yeah, so this this version is also uh, I. Uh, Talked a little bit about how you have the first class and the third class, first, mm -hmm. second, and third class on the ship. And, you know, we kind of paint a picture of the similarities and the differences of those different classes. Um, one of the things that's neat is this being the ensemble version, uh, like myself, my main character is Wallace Hartley, who was the band leader. I mentioned that. Uh, but I also play John B. Thayer, who was a first class passenger, uh, who has a family who um, unfortunately doesn't survive. His family does. Uh, but a lot of the people in the cast, I'd say about 90% of the cast, has a character that, you know, lives in the first class world, and then they're changing to become a character in either second or third class. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's a very challenging thing for the cast because there's these quick changes. Oh, my and, gosh. You know. Slapping on a mustache yeah, and a hat yeah. and running out. It's, I'm not kidding. But, it, not but, kidding. It, but to say that, crazy. I mean, it really is that. And then you may be changing your vest and your, your coat and things of that nature. But it really, when they take the stage, it, it looks like a different person. And it right. looks professional. It's not, you know, it, while it's quick and sounds simple, it really does portray a really neat look. And, um uh, you know, having that is the adds, the ensemble version to me adds a little something to it because I know that my family is very interested in coming to see me play kind of two different characters. You know, <laughs> you know just what? so you know, the ensemble version actually what the original cast was like over forty people, and so somebody in the original cast took that down to twenty and figured out the pass of who could play another character and who could double as somebody else based on when they were leaving and coming in, and then they also took the orchestra down to six pieces mainly strings mm -hmm. um it's piano oh, strings yeah, and okay. drums because i mean actually i thought about it um when you when you listen to the cd of titanic there's so much brass to it right. that it's very majestic sounding by bringing it down to only strings um we were at first a little worried that yep. it wasn't going to sound as majestic and you know um but it actually sounds very beautiful and there were strings, strings that played on the orchestra on the orchestra on the ship until it sunk so there was the, uh, there was was the band. Was, that was, it was. Awesome. It was Hartley. It was his character. So it's kind of neat that that's the path they chose when they were trying to condense the orchestra. Mm -hmm. So we chose to do this version because, number one, 
we can't fit 40 people on that stage. Right, true. And number two, it actually gives them more to do. Because if you're only yeah. in the third class and you're only in those one scenes, you might not have something to do for like most of the first act until you're in that one scene. So this does give people, you know, like you said, more opportunities to play different roles. Um, they'll come in as first class, you know, and be a little more snooty. And then they're coming in as third class and a little bit more, you know, down to earth. So it's it's kind of neat it to is watch neat. everybody. I think you should challenge him. Yeah. Do what? So, well, just, you know, before, when's the first show? This Friday, right? Yeah. Just make a quick script, uh, you know, change the yeah, script. Change it up, yeah. To where his two, <laughs> character, to where his two characters where, are talking to each other. Just to be clear, <laughs> just to be clear, I, I, you know, for those in the podcast world don't know this, I'm a big guy, and big guys don't like costume changes. But, you know, we get through it. World. We get through it, and quite honestly, uh, uh, you know, everyone else, it's it's funny. It, it becomes a little bit of a uh, controlled chaos in the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we, it, I, it's, it, to me, it sounds like it'd be fun, though. It's not bad. It, as it long is, as you get your costume on into it. As long as people don't get in your way. <laughs> yeah. Set pieces, benches coming out, Absolutely. whatever. I would yeah. think if it wasn't fun, you would, you would have a hard time finding sure. people to be in it. Yeah. Yeah, well, fine. you know, just from a and, – and Becky can speak to this probably far better than I can because she has so much more experience. But, you know, my my experience with theater is basically that, you know, I love to sing. I really right. enjoyed singing. Uh, I sing with a local barbershop group, the Bay Country Gentlemen. And You're with them? That's not a commercial for them, but I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying. You know, but ultimately, you know, I do do that. I sing with a group up in Hershey, PA, and, you know, we've had some success. And it's it's wonderful to get in front of an audience and sing. Um, you know, having the opportunity to get on stage and portray a character is really a lot of fun. Yeah. And anybody that hasn't done it, and, you know, if you think that you might want to try it, I really, really recommend you get out there and audition for something. And honestly, we have people in this show that have never been in a show before. And they have really done well. That's awesome. Um, you know, we have teachers that teach locally we have a young lady mm -hmm. uh sarah who is a, a local elementary school teacher who ha had came out to see tuck loved the production uh, thought it was really good she was friends um, with somebody in the orchestra she too, was right? friends with somebody yeah. in the orchestra mm -hmm. and decided that she wanted to come out and audition and she got on our website got our you know got the information and came out and audition and she's been an exceptional addition to our scotchfield family and mm -hmm. and you know we want people to, to not be afraid to come out right. because it, we do actually have a lot of new people we new do. to theater, and for this to be their first show, it's kind of an epic show yeah. to be your first wow. show. So, um, you know, we have a we have like what like four or five. In I would say four, in this cast, maybe? we yeah, I would say four th that have never four. done theater before. Yeah, and then you know, or did like small little you know right. like church things or something, but have never done something of this like caliber. And before. you know, the the beauty of being a part of this world for us, at least at Scott Field, and I can't really speak. I've only been in a couple of productions at Harvard Community College as well, but ultimately, you learn from some really talented, smart people. Um, our director uh, Alan Herlinger and and Becky here. Um, you know, they're really good at what they do. And it's a lot of fun to, I mean, I'm not a dancer, but Becky has found a way to make me look good <laughs> moving my feet. And, and I'll just say that that's not necessarily dancing, but ultimately it's a lot of fun to be able to be in that world. And, and there's no better rush than being on a stage in front of 200 or however many people and just feeling the energy of the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with, with Tuck, you know, we had we were very fortunate that we had people literally jump to their feet and applaud for us at the end of our shows. That's awesome. And it was exceptional. Um, we're hoping to get that same reaction for Titanic. And, you know, seeing what we see in rehearsals, we believe that it's going to be that type of show. Right. Um, you know. Well, and this has been like a crazy ride for me personally because I performed professionally for many years. And this cast is as good as any professional company I ever worked really? with. Really? Like, they are phenomenal. Like, I've done community, I grew up doing community theater around here. And this is like any other cast that, I mean, I've, uh, even like professionally, some of the voices awesome. are better than people I worked with. So, it's, um. This is being recorded, feel, right? I want to have that on tape. We, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's very, very true. I'll like, edit it so that's the only part of the podcast. <laughs> you guys will not hear it until you hear the video and you still won't hear it. In reality, like the I'm lucky because it, it's crazy after performing for so many years, starting this company and, and being on the other side and being on the production mm -hmm. staff side. I've always loved to to direct and have those visions and also choreograph and stuff and, and work with my kids. But 
choreographing for community theater and being able to be on the other side and watching everything that's happening, I hold everything to very, very high standards. And I wouldn't say that if that wasn't true. Like, it, it, it even when you have, like, something that's videoed, it just doesn't, it doesn't actually, you can't actually hear what it really sounds like. It is absolutely amazing. The wall of sound that comes from this right. cast when you're sitting out there, it's just amazing. It's amazing. We were talking earlier about, you know, uh, this being the last production of the year, right? Or the last... Uh, of this season, Of yeah. this season. Yeah. Uh, Our next one will be in October. Okay. But you have to have the rights and everything. Mm-hmm. Art now, I have Sheldon Bear, the composer of Susquehanna Symphony Orchestra, mm-hmm. on a lot. Actually, Alan Herlinger, our director, just interviewed with him last Wednesday. Oh, really? <laughs> yep, okay. he was on his show. At HCC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Now, they get... Because he gets a lot of local composers. Mm-hmm. So is there... I mean, do we know of any local people that have written musicals? Not that I know of. I'm not aware of anything. Yeah. But that, mm-hmm. I, I'm not immersed in that world like Becky would. Yeah, like, not, that, not that I know of. I mean, like, the closest that I know of it, it was my friend Chris Miller, who composed um, Tuck Everlasting. He he wrote the music for that. Um, and Nathan Tyson, his writing partner, was the, okay. the lyricist. But Chris actually is from Silver Spring. So we okay. had the Maryland connection, and then also the movie of Tuck Everlasting was filmed in Falston. So, like, we had that connection to Maryland. But around here, I'm not aware of anybody. But if you, you never know. We can yeah. find something. <laughs> yeah, so if you're there, you Well, people have asked me, when's Wonky Witch the Musical coming out? I'm like, uh... I was going <laughs> to ask you that. Uh, you know, but, uh... I write books, not musicals. But um, that would be cool. Somebody could convert it over. <laughs> can, we, can we put in a fly system at the upper house so they can fly around on their brooms? Otherwise, it won't be a... You know, there are scenes with the brooms. we got to do the brooms. Mm-hmm. That would, be, yeah. that would be pretty neat, though. It would so be crazy. So now you got something crazy. to work on. Challenge. Something else to work on. Another challenge. I've been challenged. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I have so much spare time <laughs> to write musicals now. I can't even write a book at this time. But, whew, yeah. <laughs> Anything to add about Titanic or Scott mm-hmm. Field? Anything? Um, I would say this. The only thing that, you know, uh, Becky mentioned this earlier. It is, uh, there are a lot of opportunities to go out and, Spend your entertainment dollars in Hartford County. We certainly understand that. But we promise you that if you come to Titanic the Musical or if you come to any Scott Field production, you will be entertained. You will get your money's worth. You will feel like you have immersed yourself in in an experience, not just a show. Right. Um, And we really want people to uh, come out. You know, we have uh, ticket sales have been relatively strong for this show. Um, We are... I anticipating that tickets are going to start to sell more quickly uh, for our first weekend. Um, tickets are, are going to be hard to come by uh, for the sixth, seventh, and eighth. Uh, there are tickets available. Right. Uh, our second weekend, we still have some more tickets more open, available. Yeah. Um, but you know, you can go to that to the Haverty Grace website, uh, Haverty Grace Opera House website, uh, or the Scott Field or the Facebook event, um, and you know, click on and, and get to the tickets and. You know, we just ask people to come out and, you know, honestly, take a chance on Scott Field. Um, you know, give yourself a chance to enjoy some really good local theater. And, uh, you know, we promise you, you will enjoy it. How long is the production? I don't Ooh, know. I'd say it's maybe like be, two and a half. No, I don't think it's going to be quite that long. I think it's going to be about, an with an intermission, about 215, 15. something that's like that. Well, that's not bad. And we're in tech week now, so we're really sort of Feeling massaging out, yeah. that out right. a little bit. Um, but we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have a better idea of that come, you know, opening night, of course. But ultimately, it's not going to be it's not going to be that two and a half to two forty five show. And you're you're feeling like you've been sitting there too long <laughs> now <laughs> before or during intermission or after the show or are you having a thing where audience members can go talk to the cast? Afterwards? Well, they can always meet the cast after the show. Okay. Um, we do only have two tickets left. <laughs> I'm going to promote that. Sure. But we have the opening night gala. Um, We did this for Tuck also, where um, before the show, they can come at 6.30 um, to uh, the Black Box Theater, which is downstairs, Um, and there's drinks and hors d'oeuvres, and the hors d'oeuvres are actually all based on the menu from the Titanic. Yep. And so they can come and they can just so enjoy chill. themselves. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, they're on ice. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, they can come and enjoy that. And then, you know, at about 730, head up to their seat. And then after the show, 
they can have a meet and greet and dessert and and we did actually I think before the show too we're doing a champagne toast kind mm-hmm. of like a christening the new ship which is something that That's pretty neat. they used to do yeah. and then um and then yeah and enjoy the show and they get a VIP seat to the show um, but there's only two left so if you want them go yeah. grab them now yeah it'll be but, fun it'll be a fun yeah. experience last uh when we did that for Tuck very well received we. We did that for Tuck because it was our first show ever, mm-hmm. right? And it was so well received that people reached out to us and said, "Hey, let's do this again." We enjoyed that, and Becky said, "Yeah, yeah let's do it." So she told me to plan it, and now I'm doing it. No. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> did it both times. What honestly, now he's we ready. have we have a professional caterer doing the meal mm-hmm. and and replicating uh, items from the first class and other you know making it bite sized. So yeah, it'll be like it, it's, it's not hors d'oeuvres, yeah. but it'll be. It'll be a neat experience and well worth it. Uh, we'll have some, you know, some different types of wine and things of that nature. You'll be able to come and enjoy that. Um, but like she said, we only have two tickets left to that. <laughs> but anybody can meet the cast after the show. And, and trust me when I say this, as a cast member, there is no better feeling than have people, you know, you, you know your family's going to come up. They're right. going to say, great job, we love you. But having someone that you don't recognize come up to you and say, you were really great. Yes. I really enjoyed your performance. With and, tears streaming down yeah, your face. Tuck yeah. Everlasting was a very emotional show. And, like, most of the audience came out hysterically crying and they couldn't stop. <laughs> Some of it so, was good and now, we're, and now we're bringing them Titanic. Yep, so, of yeah. course, that's not going to be an uplifting smiling at the end of the show. Well, but ultimately, but, though, yeah. you know, if, if they're the expressing their, their appreciation, you're, yeah. you yes. love it. It feels yes. good. It feels good. People that enjoy theater and everything. Well, in this case, even history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're good. I, I can see a lot of everybody going just enjoying it. Yeah, and, and everybody knows the story, but maybe you haven't seen the musical, and it's different. Yeah. It, it but you get to know, and you picture. get to know, like like he said the about characters. getting up on stage and becoming a different character. Mm-hmm. But you're actually becoming a real person that lived yeah. and either died or then survived and dealt with whatever they had to deal with of of you know witnessing this um, and what they saw. I was Which say, their accounts the people, are also different, also. So, even like, of how the people it's sung. In the musical, just to become that character mm-hmm. has got to be. Uh, who's the one actor that. Uh, oh, Daniel Day Lewis. They say he always gets so in the character and he'll stay that way throughout the whole production. Mm-hmm. Even before the production. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Studying that character. Mm-hmm. I, my wife well, was telling me to get lost if I. One, <laughs> of, one of the things that, that uh, sort of hit me mm-hmm. last night, we're, as I mentioned, we're in Tech Week. And mm-hmm. Tech Week sort of is an opportunity to really start, really start honing in on your character. Really, you know, you've you've, you've rehearsed it a bunch of times, right. but now you're really doing it. You're doing it like there's an audience out in front of you, in um, costume, in with costume, the lights, with the lights orchestra. orchestra. Everybody's yeah. there, uh, and you know when you start to uh, get into that environment and that space, and you see your fellow actors really pouring their hearts into their role, you know, you step your game up. And, (laughs) you know, last night I I witnessed uh, a couple of people that had tears in their eyes, and, and, you know, it's because they actually were survivors in the show. And they're looking at the people that don't survive, and and it was just, it was, I have to sing then. And I was like, ooh, I got to sing, I can't get emotional. (laughs) Uh, You know, and I'm a big dude, a big guy, you know, but still it hit me right, right in the heart. And... And, you know, you really see that. Right. And those people are engrossed in their characters. Mm-hmm. And, see, and I was going to put you on the spot and ask you to sing a tune, but I guess, ah. you know, for co- copyright and all that, for yeah. you that ah. not. You know, if you want to hear me sing, you need to get your tickets to the Titanic there the musical. There you go. I'll and be actually, happy to Chuck, sing does, Chuck does have a, has, has a beautiful song called Autumn. It does. It's um, a good voice. Which, it's a good song. I mean, your song, The Rag, is awesome. It's the fun dance number of the show. <laughs> it's the one upbeat number in the show. No. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's <laughs> when you see them actually having a good time on the deck, and it's the day of the crash with the iceberg so um so that's neat but then he also has a, a pretty emotional one about you know what, shall we all meet in the autumn and you know that they won't yeah <laughs> for just, lack of a better word yeah. but it's a beautiful song this yeah. the music in the show is just beautiful and you know i would like to mention this also you asked about the time and how long the show was mm-hmm. one of the things our director does is really smart is there's never any dead time on the stage you know, the, the, this scene's leaving and the right. next scene's coming on. And that's by design. Uh, you know, set pieces sometimes have to be put in place. And, you know, you might have that little bit of a delay. But ultimately, uh, you know, it's it's really smartly designed so that you, you have a nice ebb and flow to the show. That's good. Um, he does that on purpose. He doesn't want you sitting there three minutes in the right. dark for waiting for a scene change. Yeah, so. and, it, and it's... Uh, 
it, it doesn't give the audience a chance to sit back and relax. They're in, they're engaged right. in the show, yep. and and that's Agreed. smart. You want the audience to be right there with you, and and on the edge of their seat. You give them an intermission so they can go to the restroom, and then you get them back in their seats and start it all over. Again. I was, I, and I remember a critic say that's how they always read it shoes was by how many bathroom breaks they took during the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like if they got up and left in the middle of the show? Yes. Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you did Even not take a bathroom it. break, that was basically a five star. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But if you got to the point to where you were so bored or whatever, you got... Yeah, I, well, it's kind of cool it. the way that they wrote this show, mm. too, because... It's it. They leave you with like almost like a cliffhanger at the intermission because you they hit the iceberg right before intermission. Oh, at intermission. So okay. now you're about you know you have this like ten minute break, but you're about to find out what all those characters that you just got to know how right. they deal with you know the whole second act is what they deal with. So um, it's you know like sometimes like I feel like it's like intermission is just like let's take a break but this like you're actually like waiting for the next yeah. part to start because you want to find out what happens to the people you've started to learn about. So it's it's well written, I think. In that, respect. it's a good show. It's a very so good Friday, show. Saturday, and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Six. I'm probably gonna get to six, seven, seven, eight. Thirteen, fourteen, fifty. Thirteen, fourteen, fifty. Yep. Okay. Yep. And the Friday and Saturday shows are 8 p.m. shows, so that gives you opportunity to come down and enjoy a little bit of Haverty Grace if you like to, right? Uh, or just you know come down at your leisure. Some Actually, people... our 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 shows oh, yeah. are the first Friday. Yeah, our the, first the show April is the first is, Friday. Yeah, is in Haverty, Haverty Grace. Grace first Friday. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's now, so parking is going to be a little hard to find, but if you get there early, you could walk around and enjoy the first It'll Friday a little bit. Yeah. before the show, and we have I think about thirty <laughs> tickets left for that opening night. Uh, and those will go quickly. Um, you know, I I know when I checked yesterday, there was 47 tickets left, and she checked today, and there's 30. That's two. Saturday. Oh, okay. But yeah, but Friday's pretty close to that too. But ultimately, so, yeah. You know, yeah. It, you know, it's that that first Friday's a neat. We were uh, when we did Tuck, we had that as well, mm-hmm. and we didn't really know it ahead no, of time. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, it was it was kind of neat. We had a lot of people. We actually held the show for about 10 minutes to get it started because. We wanted to make sure everybody had gotten in their there. seats, and, yeah. and you know we did have a full house, so we went ahead and started. So yeah. I was going to say, can people get tickets at the door if any tickets are available? Which I don't we advise it. I'm just I'm just telling you now because of our experience with Tuck, we right. actually had to turn people away, and I don't want people to get all you know dressed up and come out to the theater and then not be able to see the show. So I just am advising anybody that asks to to get their tickets ahead of time. Not that you have to get dressed up to come to the theater. Sure. Yeah, it's an experience. So me wearing the jeans and my body lock sweatshirt would not look right there. Totally fine. We'll, we'll, you can we'll take anyone that wants to come and enjoy the show to of come course. and enjoy the show. Of but you of know, course. come as you are, but close. Well, we did have people. We did have people that had to be turned away, and yeah, right. I, I would hate to you know have to do that because who knows how far they came from. If, I don't. know. If you are that rare uh, person that you know maybe your schedule doesn't allow you to buy ahead of time. Uh, by all means, you can call the the box well, office and yeah. say, "Hey, I'd like to come. Are there available tickets?" You might even be able to purchase over the phone, so you know your tickets are there and available. Uh, right. Or you can say, "Are there tickets available?" And they'll say, "Yes, we have X number," and then you can go down and purchase your tickets. But mm-hmm. but like Becky says, it's not a chance you want to take. If you call, I don't know. You yeah, might be able to purchase over the phone. Them. I'm not sure. Yeah, that'd so. be awesome if you guys did like a. Costume contest. Have everybody, uh, people coming, dress up in Duarte. <laughs> in, t- in Edwardian costumes. Yeah. For I mean, could you imagine it? I mean, you're on stage. Oh, our stage manager, Lithia, is going to be Everybody dressed like you. That would be really cool. Now, what happens uh, if somebody comes and they look better than me? Though? That's not good. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, but they can't dance as good as you. Oh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hey, Becky taught you, so we That's know that, right. right? You, got, you make a good point. You make a good point. I'm professionally trained. That is right. There you go. That is professional. Well, I, I want to thank you both for coming on, and I hope this is a, a sellout every night, which I have a funny feeling it's going to be. And when you're the next production, once you figure out what it is, you got to let me know so you guys can come back. We'll on. come back. That'd be great. Yep. And, uh, as soon as we know. Yeah. We can't We can't uh, release Hopefully that information Hopefully we'll have heat in here by then. It'll be a lot warmer. <laughs> well, it'll be like summertime. So you'll yeah, be good. the air conditioning. <laughs> there you go. That's true. Yeah, because it does get hot in here, too. Yeah, we thank you summer. for the opportunity because, yeah. uh, you know, we love to talk about Scott Field. It's a great opportunity for us to – to be a part of it and uh, to meet, you know, it's a family. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, any any way we can promote not only what we put on stage, but having people come be a part of that family is, is mm-hmm. uh, you know, we appreciate the, the chance oh, to do that. We're, gr- it, we're growing already, which is really neat to see. And I think it, a lot of people in the, in the county don't realize 
how much goes on in the county. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, which is one of the reasons I started Harford County. That's what I was going to say. You started Yeah, Harford. a lot of people don't realize all the, the well, you, and you were talking about it earlier, mm-hmm. all the uh, talent, and talent. Um, mm-hmm. you know, professional actors, uh, and, but everything. I didn't realize so much went on at Harford Community College. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. All the plays and all the, you know, jazz and all that. Um, but and then the theater, I think the opera house is a big, 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 big plus mm-hmm. for Harvard Beautiful. County. Beautiful. Um, and then the was it the cultural car- the, the cultural uh, arts, the arts mm-hmm. car- yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be in Bel Air, right? Uh, uh, well, the center the, for the arts. The center yeah, for the arts. arts. The center plan the arts, is to be built it's on like twenty four. Right off- uh, yeah, it, no, that's going to be right. some time. I mean, their their plan there is to, you know, I think first have an amphitheater yeah, and then build a building around it. Yeah. But it's going to be a little while. Um, we all know that. And, you know, it, it's going to be great when it comes. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll certainly be there and hopefully they'll let us use the space and, and or however it's going to be rented, whatever. Right. You know. But ultimately, we'll, we'll be knocking on the door. We'll be. You know, but Moving all until that again. happens, we'll be happy to, <laughs> to be at the Harry Grace Opera House. And quite honestly, that doesn't mean we'll do everything in Bel Air because we love being at the Opera House. Right. It's been an mm-hmm. exceptional experience. Uh, Rebecca and her staff there are, you know, wonderful. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. it's a great space. If you haven't, I, I would recommend coming to the show for two reasons. See the show. It's going to be great. But see, see the, the Opera, opera house. house. It's, all, yeah. it's beautiful. It is just beautiful. Uh, beautiful art and stuff that is hanging on the walls there and just some of the history of the building in and of itself. <laughs> Well, just people that work there or that started it are just so passionate about the arts mm-hmm. in Harford County in general, but That's also in ha- within Haverty Grace, and they're just they're just such nice people. You know, and, and I didn't know really... any of that when I when I went there for Tuck. I I took it in myself. You know, found out that we've had presidents come through there and oh, give yeah. speeches. We've had uh, Cab Calloway perform there. They've mm-hmm. had you oh, know, at the Opera House. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Their history is pretty pretty rich yeah. at neat. the Opera it's House. Neat. Yeah. So I wonder, if, I wonder mm-hmm. if Capone was ever there. I know he used to there's go to the whole bunch of stuff. all the time. There's a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> on the walls. There's the racetrack and having race. There's yeah, a whole bunch of stuff on the walls. Was it Kennedy? Walls. Kennedy was there. Kennedy came, Kennedy yeah. came through and did a did a stump speech there. And, and you know, it was neat because they have a picture of that. Mm-hmm. And it was crowded. <laughs> they have all, now with the renovation, they have all that on the wall, like a timeline of, yeah. of the Opera House. So it's kind of neat to, Pretty cool. to look through. Pretty cool. Might well, have to yeah. get, uh, I forget who it was I had on here the one time where they do the ghost hunting. Oh, oh, in Happy okay. Grace yeah. for, the, for Halloween time, so yeah. I, mean, I think it was, but to go in there, because they did the hookahs antique mall, ah. and they got a lot of stuff on audio. Oh, wow. Well. There's got to be something in that theater. <laughs> I don't know. They renovated it, and there's no ghost light, which bothers me. It is weird. There's no what? Yeah, ghost tell, light. Tell them that, his, uh, that ghost tradition. Ghost light? So, ghost light. It's something that you, it's a, it's like a. Light. It's basically like a light bulb that's on the end of a pole, and you roll it out into the middle of the stage, and it's a light that's. I don't so know it's why like it's there. It's, it's, the idea is that if you turn all the lights out, the ghosts are going to come out. But in theater, the idea is, and that's just like that's generally what speaking, it is? this is like yeah. it's like to ward off the ghost. Yeah, you you leave if one light on. The you leave one light on so that the ghosts don't come and and take up your space. I mean, oh, it's, that takes it's, the fun out of it. It's a bit silly. <laughs> it's a bit silly, but I can tell I've you that actually, every theater does it. Like all the Broadway ACC, theaters, ACC HCC does really? it. Yep. Bel Air High School does it. Um, I'm, I, I volunteered there. I went to John Carroll, but I don't know if they do. But I think I a production of coming... Phantom of the Opera would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be neat. That would be neat. Yeah, but it's it's weird because when we turn all the lights off, it's like it's dark. Ooh. It's dark. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if they would be. I mean, the the building is historical, so but I don't know if they would be there if it was. Do we right. really know where ghosts are, though? I don't know. Well, that's a whole other a whole show. New segment. <laughs> that's a whole new segment. A whole new segment. Of yeah, because a ghost could be attached to something too. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so true. It, and that's what they were telling me with Pahukas, because they were because of all the antiques in there. So a spirit sure. could attach oh, itself well, to. Yeah. Well, the kind reason of cool the in reason the opera we're, house because they have all the original like exposed brickwork inside yeah. the opera house. It's the reason cool. we're doing Titanic the musical is because no, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> it's because Chuck is haunted by. That's the right. Right. I am haunted by John <laughs> B. <laughs> Thayer. <laughs> while it's hotly. The War of 1812. Most of Haverty Grace was burnt down, anyways. Yeah. You know, so Read that but the grounds are didn't, still there. Didn't the opera house burn down at some point? I don't know. I believe so. I don't know. I think it's on that. Uh, I think it's on the. The so timeline. It, like, there was a fire in the theater, but they rebuilt <clears> it or something. I, I could totally be wrong. I think I thought, that actually, if I'm now memory kind of there's something. Rem- something I think happened. when it when they had the fire, the whole upper, like, the whole third level, 
That's was what it was taken it off and they put a roof on it. That's what it was. They the did third have level three levels. Down. Yeah, and I think the story was there was a production going on at the time and, and something happened to the choreographer. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even listening. I'm watching my live video over here. Just trying to scare me. <laughs> I was like, what? It was the ghost of the, the choreographer yeah. ghost. There She's back go. there going, five, six, seven, yeah, eight, that's right. Seven, seven. <laughs> Feels hot in here. <laughs> okay, on that note, once again, I want to thank, <laughs> thank, you, I want to thank you guys for coming on. And, and like I said, anytime you want to come back, just, uh-oh, we weren't recording all this. Oh, uh, come on now. <laughs> come Anytime on. you want really to come back, just let me know. Uh, and as far as anybody out there in the county, if you ever want to come on the Hartford County Living Podcast, just contact me. It's free to come on. Uh, just another way to promote the local businesses and uh, um, organizations in the county. Oh, and speaking of which, HartfordCountyLiving.com, the Community Choice Awards, because it's favorite 501c3. Get on there and vote for uh, Scott Field Theater Company. So. Yeah. yeah, do that. That'd be great. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Thank you. Take care. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Hill Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Hill Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time.